What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 Series 8 Boost to the Top video. Now, today, uh, the Players Cup qualifiers have begun. However, I won't be streaming my qualifier run. I will prove that I used Absol. I'll lock in the team, take a screenshot and everything. Um, but I'm quite busy and I also don't want to deal with stream snipers because that has been an issue in the past. So, just to give you a sneak preview of like the completed Absol team because there have been changes made, I'm going to be using it in today's video. So if you guys enjoy that, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. And that's the comment question of the day. What do you think is the best dark type in the format that isn't Eveltal? Because I feel like Eveltal is technically the best dark type, it just isn't quite as spammable because it is a restricted Pokemon. Probably Urshifu. I would say probably Urshifu, but I think Grimmsnarl gives it a run for its money. Uh, so yeah, let me know. This is the completed Absol team. As you can see, some changes have been made. Absol is no longer Choice Banded. I've actually changed it to be Focus Sash because I actually get a lot out of that, especially since I fixed a lot of issues regarding my Trick Room matchup by slapping Taunt on it. And GMAX Venusaur is now a more prominent option in this team. So yeah, as we're facing an interesting team, not really one particular mode on this team. However, I do feel pretty comfortable uh, leading off with Venusaur versus this. They have a really big Venusaur weakness that they kind of only check with Cinderace. Nothing else really takes Venusaur. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lead off Venusaur. And I think next to Venusaur, I feel pretty inclined to go Thunderous. Um, there isn't really much of a place for Absol in this matchup other than possibly clicking close combat once or twice so it's not going to show up here i think i'm just going to go sun room or i could even i could even just leave porygon 2 at home to be honest they have a better trick room thing <laughs> they have a better trick room mode than i do uh despite the fact that they have no trick room setter so i'll bring absol i'll bring absol it's been kind of clutch in a couple of games especially versus um like occasional rock and steel types like we see there's a tyranitar here it's been able to click close combat a few times and that's been really nice uh, and while they do have a lot of dark resistances, I think Taunt might be useful for dealing with Grimmsnarl since Grimmsnarl, um, while it is dark type, it can avoid getting taunted by prankster moves. Absol is not a prankster Pokemon, so it can actually bypass that. I'm still in my PJs, man. It's super early. I also changed my outfit for Player's Cup. <laughs> I'm no longer wearing the standard stuff. We're, we're dressed up all nice like Michael Jackson almost. Just that Michael Jackson style, you know? There's the Cinderace and the Grimmsnarl. Um, Grimmsnarl does sometimes carry Taunt, but I don't really think Cinderace is going to be carrying what it needs for this matchup. Um, I could try to just Sleep Powder it. And that would be very nice. I might just go for that. I might just go for the Sleep Powder and get in the Groudon. Because uh, even if this doesn't work out, I do still get in Groudon, which is really nice. Also, Venusaur now carrying Weather Ball is really nice for the Zacian matchup, because I no longer have to get Speed Boost or set up Trick Room to deal with uh, Zacian. As long as there is Sun on the field and, you know, Venusaur is alive, I have the option of hitting it with a very powerful Weather Ball or uh, a Max Flare. So that's been really clutch in a couple of games. I am also carrying Koba Berry on this, uh, not on the Cinderace, but on the Venusaur. So I might be able to take a Max Airstream here. I do have a little bit of bulk investment. However, it'd be a lot easier to take the Max Airstream if I did Dynamax this turn. So hopefully uh, no Fake Out, no Taunt. I just, you know, hopefully they just go for screens or something. I've also gotten into the habit of bringing water with me when I record because it's it's been an issue a couple of videos where like my throat will get really dry in the middle of the recording session and I'll just be like, dang, I really should have gotten water. So that's not taken care of. <clears throat> As the Cinderace G maxes, uh, hopefully we can connect this here. Taunt, no! Oh, that play made no sense. This is the second time someone has taunted my Groudon. Or not taunted my Groudon, but taunted my Thunderous, and it just is not at all the play. And it's not Barry. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take this free KO, because I should be able to max Quake now. Yeah, I feel comfortable doing this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and Sludge Bomb the Grim Snarl and just go for this Max Quake onto the Cinderace. It's going to be a KO as long as it doesn't wake up this turn. 
I am so confused as to why they would go for a taunt into the Thunderous. Maybe it was a misclick, but that's happened like twice now when I've been using this team. People have been taunting the Thunderous, expecting it to be like Prankster Thunder Wave or something. But no, no, I'm just, I'm standard defiant. I don't know what they're doing. Let's see if it wakes up. There it is, there's the taunt. Too bad for you, I didn't really click anything that that matters for. And fun fact, uh, the Cinderace might survive this hit since I'm not max attack, but if it doesn't wake up at the end of the turn, nice poison there, uh, I'll still be able- oh, it woke up. Well, that shocks. Now my entire turn's wasted, because <laughs> it woke up, dang it, okay. How do I play out of this? Uh, I did bring Absol, and Cinderace probably isn't with- oh. We lived. Okay, you are sticking around, bud. You are gonna... I gotta hold on to you. Because I'm gonna need to... I'm seriously gonna need to hold on to that thing. Uh, I suppose a Max Flare would be a decent play here. Leftover's Grim Snarl. What? Okay. So, the Cinderace is gonna outspeed me here. I could just go Absol here and live with a Focus Sash and go for the Max Flare. And as long as they don't double into the Venusaur slot, which I don't think they will, um, and as long as they don't go for a Fire-type move, which I think it's kind of unsafe to, considering I have Quake as an option, I should be able to go for this really... What? D uh, d no. No. Why? What was the point of that? <laughs> Why are you carrying Trick Leftovers? What? What do you gain? <laughs> I don't get it. Maybe they meant to make it like eject button or something. I don't know. But that just, that just didn't make sense. Like, honestly, I don't even care. <laughs> I don't even care. Maybe he thought it was weakness policy and that's just like, that's just like a weakness policy precaution, but I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, regardless, Cinderace might actually just be within range of Sucker Punch now. Since it's not Dynamaxed. I think it might be. I'm just going to Sucker Punch here. Uh, and I can also just go for a Max Flare since it doesn't really matter who I target. There's the Trick. Doesn't affect me because I'm Dark-type. Here's the Sucker Punch. I do get the KO. Awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm genuinely confused as to what that what that play was for. Now, I do need some chip damage on that Zacian before I can KO it with Weather Ball, since I'm not Dynamaxed Venusaur. And it's likely going to be doing a ton to my Groudon with uh, Behemoth Blade. How many turns of Sun are left? That's going to matter here. Gastron the Rank Master. More like Gastron the Stank Master. Am I right, guys? Really? They didn't even bring a Restricted! Like, I'm. I just don't even know what to think about this match. You guys might think I'm just being mean, but, like, I'm just confused. Like, everything has confused me in this match. Zacian does so good in this matchup. Like, it's not that it does good in particular versus Groudon, but it's always good. That's that's the thing. It's always good. Alright, um, now I'm not particularly worried about anything. I'm just gonna... I guess I just switch in Venusaur here to try to avoid a Grassy Glide. And I can also just get in the Thunderous. Maybe they'll like... I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe they'll just forfeit here. I, I don't know how they win. Especially with Thunderous in the back. And the fact that it's Lumberry. Well, they don't know that though. So I guess my win con is just get rid of Gastrodon. And it should be relatively easy from then on. I just realized that that rhymed. My win con is to get rid of Gastrodon. And then it should be pretty easy from then on. I'm spitting bars by accident. Blink. Yeah. That's fine. Ice be Oh, no. That's a little annoying. Don't freeze. I guess it wouldn't matter. The harsh sunlight also just makes it so they can't, so that's pretty cool. Alright, uh, let's get an Absol here. I suppose my play is just knock off Gastrodon fly into the Rillaboom. 
Knockoff should do a pretty decent amount since this thing doesn't have great defense. It has good special defense, but not great defense. A lot of people forget about that. Like, it needs to set up curses to be defensive. Or acid armor if it gets that. I'm pretty sure it does, but curse is just better. Wow, that doesn't even take me down to Sash. I really thought it would. Here's the knockoff. <laughs> Critical hit. Nice. I actually made this thing super luck. Ice beam. What? Okay. Well, that's annoying. If I lose this one, I swear, dude. I swear. That better be Assault Vest Rillaboom with no bulk so I can one-shot it with this move. How many turns are left to Grassy Terrain? Like, two or three? Probably way more, and I'm just not counting. This Rillaboom better not have Protect. Alright, uh, three turns left of Grassy Terrain. I suppose my play is to Protect here. Try to get back some health. Let's see if it has Protect. Grassy Glide, okay. Can I one-shot, please? Not quite. Um, wow, they doubled into me for no discernible reason. I, I don't know why they would double there. I get so much health back at the end of the turn, too. That's funny. Um, honestly, I'm somewhat tempted just to fire punch this Rillaboom, certain that I live this hit. Considering Absol took it that well, I, I want to just, I want to stunt on him real quick. Let me fire punch. And I'll superpower the Gastrodon. I'm going to stunt on him. I guarantee you I love this. I don't think that Rillaboom's trained right. Yeah, easily. Superpower will KO for sure. And uh, the Fire Punch should finish it up from here. That was a really tricky endgame for some reason. I don't know why. I guess it's just because I got Thunderous in on an Ice Beam, which made it a little bit uncomfortable. It wasn't difficult, it was uncomfortable. That's that's the difference there. Alright. Let's get another. I, I do want to look at that team. I'm genuinely curious. Alright. Um, interesting. How's this train? Max HP, that makes sense. This set makes sense. Yeah. Was it weakness policy? Yeah. Salt Vest Rillaboom called that. Set makes sense. Not max attack, but still adamant. Uh, that's a pretty standard set. I'm just genuinely con- I I'm confused about the Grim Snarl in particular. Leftovers. Is it max defense? I mean, like, yeah, that makes sense. It's th These things typically are defensive, right? So. But that set, I just don't get the trick. Maybe it's just to, like, call um, a weakness policy and remove it, but honestly, I, I just don't understand the trick on that. Thunder Wave is, like, so much more useful. I think Thunder Wave would have probably won them the match if they had it. So in the end, the team was actually pretty normal. It just, like, it, it was just, like, strange. The, the Grim Star on that threw me off. Alright. As we're facing a rain team, I haven't seen this, like, ever. That's crazy. Um, and it's like a rain team without Kyogre. Like, you see rain, but you don't see rain without Kyogre very often. It looks like Trick Room has the potential of being good here, but... Um, Honestly, just going Venusaur and getting up my weather second seems a lot better than that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead off Venusaur Absol. And Absol will allow me to taunt the Porygon too in case they decide to try to go Trick Room mode. And I'm just going to bring Groudon Thunderous. And it shouldn't be too difficult of a matchup, I think. As long as I don't mess up the lead. Because I would assume that they would just lead off with either Trick Room or Hard Rain. And I can counter both of those with Venusaur and uh, Absol.
a lot of people have asked me, um, Marcos, like what what does this Absol set do that Urshifu can't? And it's only really doing two things that Urshifu can't. Uh, Urshifu doesn't get knockoff, and who is gonna run taunt on Urshifu? That's a waste. <laughs> that's that's all it does. That's literally the only difference. <laughs> Who's gonna run taunt on Urshifu? <laughs> uh, okay. It's also got super luck, so I get some pretty lucky crits. Some super lucky crits, I guess, would be the way to call it, you know? As they lead off with Dracozolt and Zacian, I'm actually pretty... I'm pretty happy with that lead. I can live with that. Um, I am carrying... I am carrying a Koba Berry, so if they max Airstream me, I'm perfectly fine. I'm just going to go ahead and try to get a really cheeky removal of this Zacian here. I'm going to be cheeky. Hopefully it works out for me. If it does not, I'm going to be very upset. Because then I just lose. <laughs> Stay in, please. Dynamax the Dracozult and go for the max airstream, please. Por favor, please. All right, looks like they stayed in. Hopefully no protect, but it is possible. They could have just protected and gone for the max airstream. They don't have time to substitute though, so maybe they were like, ah, oh, yes, I'm not gonna think about the grout on the back. As they do Dynamax, let's see what they go for. Let's see what they go for. There's the Drake Azult. Dynamaxing up. As they opt to protect, unfortunately. That is that does leave me in a pretty awkward position if they decide to max airstream. If they didn't max airstream, I'm still fine. But if they did decide to max airstream, this is kind of an awkward position. There it is. Into Groudon. Um, how bad is this? It isn't the worst. I think I... Let me think. How do I do this? I definitely just need a P-Blades. And hope for the best. I'm just going to max strike and P-Blades again. Or not max strike, but max flare. Because the Zacian is going to outspeed me now, and it can go for a Behemoth Blade. I don't think I live this. I do have a lot of HP, but I don't think I live it. Oh, I do. Cool. <laughs> Never mind. We're good. Get rid of the biggest threat on their side of the field. By the way, I just recently changed this uh, this Venusaur, so I'm not familiar with what it lives. I should probably get familiar, though. <laughs> That's so bad that I don't know that. Is they up to max Wormwind, which is fine by me, because my Groudon still lives, and I'm going to be able to max guard this next turn and possibly go for a Sleep Powder. Possibly? But Sash on the... Um, and yeah, the Whiter returns my stat back to normal. Actually, no, I can definitely just go for the Vine Lash. <laughs> I can Vine Lash here and I'll be fine. There's the Pelipper. Ooh, spicy. So they're like, hmm, I can still outspeed this man. But they cannot. I'm gonna max guard here. And I think now is when I would send an Absol. What if they're Tailwind? Tailwind could mess me up. That makes me want to just go for the Vine Lash and throw Caution to the wind, you know? We'll Vine Lash here. And I'll go Thundee, actually. I don't mind losing Thunders in this matchup. As long as I can keep the Grout on and the Absol, I actually am probably fine. And the reason I'm going for the Vine Lash onto the Dragazult here is because it's going gonna, it's gonna to take chip damage, and then at the end of the turn... It's going to, like, just, you know, take a lot. Alright, let's see. Um, I don't believe that the Pelipper is going to outspeed me. Or actually, it might. 
It depends how much speed they have. Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> I thought they would just tailwind, to be honest. I'm going to lose my boy there. Um, but I can just get back in the... Or I can get in the Absol right now. I can get in the Absol right now and go for a Sucker Punch on the Dragazolt. And then switch in my Groudon. And then Thunderous plus Absol can deal with whatever. Yeah, this is definitely within Sucker Punch range. I could try to knock off, but I'd rather preserve my Sash if possible. Getting the Groudon here, if I can remove this Drake Azult, uh, then we're stuck with my weather forever, unless they're carrying Rain Dance, which isn't really common. Alright. As they protect, what do they go for here? Hopefully a Tailwind. Hydro Pump. Hey, we'll take it. We'll take it. Alright, um... Since I just revealed Sucker Punch, I'm going to assume they're going to switch out here, so I'm going to knock off. And I'm actually willing to go right back out into the Thunderous to take that Sun... That, um, Sun-reduced Hydro Pump. If they decide to go for it again. But I would assume that Dragazolt switches out here. And even if it doesn't, it does have a chance to miss. Unless it goes for Aerial Ace. Um, and I still have my Focus Sash. Basically, Absol's become the win condition. Looks like they stayed in. There's the Dragon Claw. As they connect, hopefully they didn't double in the Absol. Because the Sucker Punch is going to be really useful. As they did target the Thunderous, so I'm good. And now we're stuck with my weather. Safety Goggles, interesting choice. I guess it makes sense given their team. Glad I didn't sleep powder. There's the Glacier. I do have close combat, uh, so I can actually just close combat superpower and probably win. So we're going to go for that. Absol going to save the day here. They're probably thinking, haha, I lived. And then the Absol. As they go for a Tailwind. I, I don't know why you would Tailwind with a Glacier unless you're like max speed. Alright, yeah, I should be fine to win now. Because um, I sort of have a pin here. If I wild charge their Pelipper, I get a free knockoff. And if they, you know, they have Tailwind up, right? So they're going to outspeed both of my Pokemon. Regardless of who they attack, I win. Because a wild charge will likely one-shot. And if they decide to go for like a, I don't know, a crit Hydro Pump into the um, Thunderous, they're just going to get left with a Pelipper within range of Sucker Punch after the knockoff. There's the Hurricane. They do connect it. They're like, I do not want to lose to an Absol today. They're like, not today. That is not how I'm, how I'm embarrassing myself today. Wild Charge. Are they Sash? They are Sash. I'm going to take a lot of recoil there, but granted they don't have a spread move, I still win. Like, Icy Wind critting my Thunderous is like the only conceivable way they win. If Pelipper even gets Icy Wind this gen. So we're just going to go for the Fire Punch here. And a Wild Charge. And that'll be game. Hydro Pump. They're like, I'm getting rid of this Groudon as they go for the Thunderous again. Maybe they're hoping I don't have a w any way of hitting it. But I am carrying Fire Punch, so we're good. Awesome. Awesome. Take a little bit of recoil, but I live at one health. Uh, that little built-in focus sash. Anyways, I think I'm going to call it there, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the support and the content lately. Uh, you guys really seem to enjoy slash hate the Chansey video, and you guys really like the Absol team so far. So, 
Yeah, this was just the last little practice session before I do my Players' Cup matches. So wish me luck. I'm going to try to qualify today. This will be going up at around 3 p.m. today. So I will see you guys later. Have a nice night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.